Now let us proceed with the channel section or the C section here. How will the shear force or how will the shear stress vary due to bending in Mz direction? Okay. So, the shear stress is going to vary something like this. Let us make a cut here, we make a cut there. If we make a cut there, okay, and MC pass MC moment produces compressive force on the top flange. So there is that compressive stress coming on the top flange, which is computed by M by MZ by IZZ into Y minus Y naught. Okay, so uh, let's assume that. Uh, this is y, this is z, and this is positive x. Okay, so basically, this stress here is going to be more than this stress here is going to be more than the stress there, and hence to balance that, there should be a shear force or shear stress acting in this direction on this phase. And then the complementary shear will act like this on that face. Okay. Similarly, if I cut at the bottom here, if I cut at the bottom here, the shear stress should act like this because there is tensile stress acting on the bottom face, there is this tensile stress acting at the bottom face. This is more and the ends in a section made here. That should be the shear stresses acting like this because the indicated force, tensile force is more along the positive x direction for a mz moment which is positive. Okay. So, it has to vary like this okay. and in the web as usual the shear stress has to vary like this that is the sigma x y shear is a regular shear. Okay. So, in a channel section if you see the distribution of shear stresses is something like this, okay. the variation of shear stresses is something like this. Okay. So, in a channel section the shear stress varies like this. Now, what happens there is the horizontal force equilibrium will demand that uh, this force Q should be balanced by this force Q okay. and this vertical shear, this vertical shear force V y acting in the web that will add up to V y as you saw in the last class okay. that should be balanced by the externally applied load P whose magnitude will be V y. Okay. So, now what happens this Q produce this Q produce a clockwise moment, torsional moment. The moment is acting along the CG of the cross section. It produces a clockwise moment that should be balanced by the eccentrically applied load P to the shear force Q V Y acting in the cross section. Okay. So, this produces an anti clockwise moment. So, what we are interested is we are interested in balancing this V Y times E with the q times the h which is the liver arm there. Okay. So, uh, we, we have to now compute this q and we have to relate it to the distance e which is from the shear center to the center of the web or the cross section. Okay. Let us go about doing that. So, I have a channel section. Okay. So, now I have to choose a S starting from here. We said that the S can be in the direction of the shear flow or opposite to the direction of shear flow, but cannot 
across from opposite to in the direction of shear flow ok. So, let me measure S from here then for a section taken here I have to find y times the area indicated by that uh, red shaded region. So, my sigma sigma x z would be v y by i z z into let us assume that uh, the flanges of are of thickness T f this flange is of thickness T f the web is of thickness uniform thickness T w is of uniform thickness T w the width of the flange is B f and the depth of the web is h ok. So, now the area of the shaded region would be s times T f into the C g of that section would be h by 2 plus T f by 2 ok. So, that is going to be divided by the thickness of this cut which is T f ok. So, this is nothing but V y by I z z into h plus T f by 2 into s ok that is sigma x z in the top flange. The bottom flange also I can measure s from here and it will have a similar variation this is for the top flange sigma x z for the bottom flange would have a similar variation for the same reasons that we said for the top flange h plus T f by 2 into s ok. Now, in the web region as you know there is a sigma x y stress produced sigma x y in the web just like what we did for I section and rectangular section is going to be V y by I z z into B f into h plus T f by 2 into T f plus h by 2 the whole square minus y square for the web area divided by T w. Basically what I am doing here is I am cutting it here this thickness is T w this is T w and I am finding this entire area now that entire area I have to find which I decompose into a flange area the flange area gives me this component of the uh, shear stress and the web area gives me this component of the shear stress web area times the center of that web area ok gives me this component of the shear stress ok. By the way I left it 2 here by 2 ok. So, that is on the web. Now, what I want to do is I want to compute integral sigma x z tau flange into d y d z for area of top flange ok. From here you see that the stress varies linearly from here you see that the stress is varying linearly ok and the ends I can directly find this variation I know that the stress is varying linearly. So, that is a linear variation with this being tau 1 ok, but tau 1 is tau 1 would be V y by I z z into B f into h plus T f by 2 ok, ok. So, because I substitute for S B f in this expression I substitute for S B f in this expression because S is B f because this width is B f ok. So, 
I get that as tau 1 ok. Now, so this integral I can evaluate it as tau 1 into B f into T f by 2 ok. Because this is linearly varying the, uh, the sum of the loads total load would be one half of the height of the triangle region times the length of the base ok. So, if I have load varying like this where here the force is this force magnitude was to be tau 1 B f into T f sorry if the stress were to be tau 1 there the stress were to be tau 1 there then the net stress acting on this region would be and if this width were B f the net load acting on this area would be tau 1 by 2 to B f into T f that is the cross sectional dimension of the flange ok. So, that is what this one is ok. So, I have found essentially your Q ok. Now, uh, what do I want? I know that the channel section there is this net force Q acting like that and net force Q acting like this and this distance is what I am interested in that distance would be H plus T f ok and uh, there is this shear stress sigma x y which will if I integrate I will get it as V y there ok V y and I have this externally applied load acting at some distance E from here I have to find what is that distance. So, writing a moment balance for the torsional moment I will get it as Q times H plus T f which is a clockwise moment minus V y times E must be equal to 0 ok. So, from here I get E to be Q times H plus T f by V y ok, where Q is what we got in a previous expression sigma 1 Q is V y by I z z into B f into H plus T f by 2 into B f T f ok. So, now that is Q. So, I have V y V y cancels V y by I z z into B f into H plus T f B f square to T f square by 2 times V y ok. So, now this is nothing but B f square T f H plus T f whole square by 2 times I z z ok that will be your point about which you have to apply the load ok. So, there is no net torsional moment coming in the cross section ok. Now, let us do it systematically and how do I know that uh, in, instead of doing it ad hocly by integrating sigma x z over the cross section area finding q and doing this way let us see how it gels in with our overall approach ok. Before going there I would like to show that integral sigma x y web this I pointed out in the last class also I am going to point it out in this class also sigma x y d a x would be nothing but v y integrated over the a x ok. In this case it is integrated over the web ok. So, there will be nothing but v y you have to do the calculation and check that it is v y if you are getting something different then it seems that it means that some calculation mistake has been done somewhere ok. Now, though I give a formal 
derivation for finding the shear center uh, it is only for illustrative purposes in this course in advanced course we will be dealing with these equations in more detail okay.